every show closes. It was such a big part of my childhood and like growing up. There's many people who they met their spouses here, their kids have grown up here. I absolutely believe that they are family. This was a fixture, this was a, a landmark in Boulder. They've been so loyal to me. We're gonna close if you don't do it. Now we're closing. The plan right now is to have two stationary platforms that are that these guys stage right and stage left. Um, you can access them through the kitchen and the pit. Okay, great. Um, this is uh, this is not exactly what we're doing, but this is where we started pre pre pandemic. Um, so this was that kind of iteration we were doing. Um, the, ben put this together. I was going to do white shoes with that. I love that idea because it just. Makes I am Seamus McDonough, and I'm the producing artistic director of BDT Stage, also known as Boulder's Dinner Theater. My dad was the original employee in this theater in 1977 when it opened. So when I was born in 85, I was kind of born into it. So it's been a lifetime of a love of live theater. When I think about standout memories. Um, the first one that I really think about is in 1990, for my fifth birthday, I remember coming to the show. And that's really the first show that I ever actually remember seeing. And it was Big River. Um, and it was the, just one of the coolest experiences ever. And I remember, I still listen to that soundtrack today. It's just a really amazing show. And that was a really fun time. Um, Fast forward to nine years later, when they were doing the show again, was actually the first show that I worked here in the building. So I got the first show I remember seeing, and then the first show I remember I actually worked and was on the payroll was the same show. So that was a fun time. My name is Michael Duran. Uh, I am currently the executive producer at BDT Stage. I've been the uh, producing artistic director since 2003. Um, I actually got my start at this theater in 1977. I had gone to the city council in Boulder and talked about the tax burden that we have and um, you know, property taxes and the seat tax and all that that we have to pay to keep our doors open. And we don't get grant money. We don't get corporate money because we're for-profit theater. And go, I went to the council and tried to get them to give us a break. And all you have, they, you know, they shook their head. Yeah, it's very sad. So we, we're going to close if you don't do it. And um, now we're closing. They didn't, they didn't come out to help us. And um, although they did give us a grant, I, I can't, you know, diss them too much because they gave us a grant at the beginning of the pandemic, which was really great. So they helped us there. But um, the tax burden is huge and was... Uh, a huge factor in the decision to close. And not, and for somebody else to open a theater here, it's hard to make any money. Uh, this land is gone, this theater's gonna be knocked down, and um, they're gonna put, uh, I think, affordable housing and retail in here. So um, if it, somebody did decide to buy the BDT stage name, they'd have to build a theater someplace else. Um, whether that's going to happen or not is, you know, I don't really know. I'm not privy to that information, if there is any out there. Uh, we had talked about it for a while back. Maybe somebody would, would want to buy the name and move it, but nothing's really come, come of that yet. It's not like just doing a show. We're in the trenches out on the floor. You know people's quirks, you know people's buttons, you you know how to cope with people. So you get to know people on a level that you don't when you're just doing shows. Um, and the flip side of that is 
if there is a crisis or if something happens, the way people rally to each other in this building is staggering and is so beautiful to watch. So if, people, if somebody is sick, if somebody has a baby, that's not a bad thing, but like any of those things, those life things that happen, because everybody here in Colorado, we're here doing theater because we're choosing the version of show business where we can have a family as well. This has been a super special place um, for me. It's been special for my family. Um, um, my husband got the job after I talked with Michael. Um, my other fun little thing is, as Michael and I were leaving the interview, and he offered, he said, "I, I you know, we want to offer you the job. We'll call you with the cost and all that kind of stuff." He said, "And by the way, do you know any accountants?" And I was like. It just so happens that I am married to this guy, and and Jeremy started as the bookkeeper, and and during COVID, him and Seamus were the last two employees that that kind of kept us going over COVID, um, and uh, I don't know. We as theater people, we always talk about the the actors, and we talk about the designers, and I think we got to pay homage to the people that pay the damn bills, um, <laughs> and keep the place going. Not only him, but all the other um, administrative type folks that keep everything going. Um, but yeah, my, it's, it's special. My whole family has been here. My kids got to be on stage. My daughter got to train the dog for Annie. I mean, it was, um, they've worked in the, my kids have worked in the shop painting with me. It's, um, I am glad they got to grow up here. I'm glad I got to develop my craft here. Uh, and I'm super, super glad I got to work with the people and meet the people that, uh, that I have. And it will for sure be missed. I've been coming since I was a little kid, like probably five or six is when I've seen the first play here, so quite a while I've been coming. I was coming frequently when I was in graduate school and all, all the way through with different groups. The first time I came was uh, with the office that I worked at, a car, uh, Mountain View Chiropractic Center, and we came and saw 42nd Street, and I've been coming ever since. It's really heartbreaking, but I really worry about all, all the performers and, and the staff people and the tech people. This has been like a family activity for us. I mean, it's, it's been a major staple in the community for such a long time, and we're just really going to miss it. So still kind of hoping for a miracle, you know, that someone will take it up and maybe they can move somewhere else. It's really sad. I'm going to be really sad, and it might be really hard to find another place like this. Something I'd like to say is that I will be forever thankful for this building. It not only gave me a life as a kid and supported my parents to be able to raise me, um, I have personally worked here, I met my wife here, I have a beautiful baby girl thanks to everything and that's all thanks to this place. Um, and uh, you know I was very fortunate to have so many people in this building my entire life who have been like brothers, fathers, mothers, aunts, all of that through through all the years. Uh, one of the ladies working the front desk right now was my nanny. So uh, just it's been it's been an incredibly special thing to be part of and um, yeah, just very thankful for it.